Today we're going to venture out into the huge big world. We're going to visit different continents. We're going to watch animals and gather information about them. We're going to study these creatures to create an encyclopedia. This is a game from Holy Grail Games. It's one to four players and it's about 25 minutes per player. In this video, I am going to show you the setup of this beautiful game and I'm going to show you how to play the game. So when you have watched this video, well, you are ready to venture out into the world to create your own little encyclopedia. So let's have a look at this. So this here is the setup of the game. We start with unfolding the big board and put it in the center of the table for all players to easy reach. Then each player takes their player board. These boards are double sided. One side has the letter A and the other side has the letter B. The B side is only used if you play solo mode. Then this will be the AI side. So when you play with other players, this is the side that you should have facing up. You should also take a little reputation token in a color of your choice and put it on the starting spot on the reputation track. Then you need to take a character that you would like to portray as. These as well are double sided, but it does not make any difference which side you choose. The players also need to take a reference board. These as well are double sided. One side are used during gameplay and the other side is used during the scoring phase. Then the players need to take their colored cubes. These are the research cubes. They also need to take the token with five cubes on them, again in their player color, along with a score token in their player color. These score tokens are placed on number zero on the score track. Lastly, the players take one more score token in case they reach higher numbers than the hundreds. The first player is determined at random and gets the first player token. Then we have these beautiful little boxes. These should be filled up with royal seals. In this one we have the expedition tokens and coins. Then we need to randomly place six round tokens face down on the round track. The expert cards, meaning these ones here, are shuffled, placed next to the gaming area, and then we take six of the cards and place them face up in the university area. We do the same thing with the animal cards. These ones are shuffled, and then we take the top eight cards and place them face up on the central board. How many cards you should have here is all depending on how many players you are. Now each player gets to draw two animal cards from this area. Starting with the last player and going counterclockwise until we reach the first player. And then each player gets expedition tokens and coins. According to how they sit around the table. The first player would get one expedition token and two coins. The second player, one expedition token and three coins. The third player, one expedition token and three coins. The fourth card player gets one expedition token and four coins. Finally, we need to fill this pretty little bag up with all the die. So in Encyclopedia, you play as a naturalist, trying to complete the Encyclopedia. Hard word. You will do this by getting experts on your team. Go out and visit the different continents and get some animals to research more about. You will put these little research cubes on the different little animals that you collect out there and eventually you will be able to publish everything you know about these animals to get a little little note in history of the encyclopedia. Each player will play their turn by simply taking a die from either their player board or another player's board. Then they will take this die and place it out on one of the spaces on the board and take that action. The turn will then move on to the next player and this is the way one round will go on until all the die have been collected from the boards. But before we get to place out the die, we need to refill the board 
with the animal cards but also the expert cards. This is of course not done during the first round because we have just filled it up. But at the start of every other round from now on we will need to do this. And then each round start by us taking the first token on the round track, flipping it around and then resolving that bonus immediately. Depending on which token you draw, different things will of course occur. If you draw the die, each player draws one additional die for this round. They must then allocate two die to the same location on their player board. If we draw the expedition token, each player gets one expedition token. If you get the scroll, starting with the first player, then going around the table, each player takes one expert card for free. If we get the coins, each player gets three coins. If we get the magnifying glass, starting with the first player, each player will take one animal card for free from the available cards. And if we get the blank one, well, nothing happens. When all players have received their starting round bonus, we now need to go around the table, starting with the first player, and draw four random die from this pretty little bag. These dies are then rolled. Now we need to take this result and we need to place it out on our player board. Now it does not matter how you place them, you can place them any way you would like to. But these are the die that we now will use to do the actions out on the table. But you can also choose to take the other player's die from their board. But if you choose to take a die from another player's board instead of your own, that player will receive the bonus stated on the board. So what kind of bonus can they get? If another player takes your first die, well then you will get nothing. But if they take your second die, you would get two coins. If they take your third die, you would get two reputation points, meaning that you need to move this token up two step. If this token lands on any on these bonuses, you would get that bonus immediately. Lastly, if a player takes this die here, you would get three points on the victory track. So during the setup, you got some coins, but you also got some expedition tokens. But what do these actually do? Well, the coins can be used to raise the numbers on your die. Meaning that if you, for example, get two, you can throw away one coin and now it will all of a sudden be three instead. And you can pump up these die how much you would like to, meaning that 6 is not this die's final form. This one could become 10 or 15 depending on how much money you spend. But you can also change the color on the die by using this little expedition token. Meaning that if you have a red die but you really want it to be purple, well then you can throw away one expedition token and voila, you have a purple die. It's still red, but come on, have a little bit of imagination, right? Besides the coins and the expedition tokens, we also have the royal seals. And these ones are quite powerful, because they can add 5 to your die result. And change the color on that die. Or you could save this to the end of the round to get one more action. Or you could also choose to save this to the end of the game to get 4 more victory points. So these are quite powerful. So be sure to try to get as much coins, expedition tokens, but also royal seals as you possibly can during this game. So be sure to try to get as much coins, expedition tokens and royal seals that you can during this gameplay because they can change the game quite a bit. When we have chosen a die, either from our own board or from an opponent's board, it's time for us to take this die and place it with that result showing from the start on the spot you would like to do an action, out on the board. But what can you actually do out here? Well, you can do quite a lot. Let's start at the top of the board, at the bank. All expeditions would need to get some money to actually be able to happen. Now, when you have chosen a die, you can choose to put this die in the bank spot. It's just the player that takes this action first, but you put it on this little square here, which will also give you the first player token during the next round. And during this round, you will get all of the benefits that the first player has instead. But you will also get 5 coins. 
And this does not matter which color the die is. You can use any color die and you would still get the same bonus. But remember, it's just the player that takes this action first that would get the first player token. Any other players coming after them would just get the money. Which is also kind of good. You can also choose to visit the university during your turn. Again, it does not matter which color or number your die have. You get to choose one of the faced up cards on this market. But if you have the same color as the card you choose, you will get one expedition token. Depending on which expert you choose, you will get different kinds of bonuses that you can see down here. There's three different types of experts. This one here with the eternity symbol will give you this bonus during your gameplay, as long as this card is faced up on your player board. This card here is a one-time bonus, and once you have used it, you place it face down on your player board. This one here has a little bell, meaning that this card here will give you extra bonus during the scoring phase. Once you have chosen one of these cards that you would like to have, you take that card and you place it face up on one of your four available spots. As you can see, you have four available spots on your board. But you can place more cards on top of these. Just make sure that you use your card before you place the new one on top of it. Because now the one that is below cannot be used again. And the new card above is the one that is active for now. Then we can also choose to go to the academy, which is the center of the big board. Here we get to choose an animal that we would like to study. But this time the color of your die actually has a purpose. Because here you can only choose an animal with the same color as your die. And also the result on your die matters. Because here you will get reputation points according to the number on your die. So in this case here I have 6 on my die. Meaning that I actually get 3 reputation points. I will use these points to move up my little score tracker here on my board and take any bonuses that I pass. The card that you have chosen is then placed in front of you on the table. On these cards we can see a bunch of information. Up here we have the name of the animal, here we have the continent the animal belongs to, we have some artwork, but down here we got a bunch of information. This up here is where we put our research cubes when we do the research. And down here we can see the types and categories for this animal. And these symbols down here will become important when we do our publishing. But I will tell you more about this in a little bit. It's time for us to go out on an expedition to find out more about the animals that we have just chosen. To do this, we need to have a die with the same color as the continent that we would like to visit. Then we need to place that die on the leftmost space on these squares. Now, the place that we put them on either has some stars or not. If they have stars, well, you guessed it, we will get that amount in reputation. And here, the amount of your die will matter. Because the amount you have on your die here will determine how much research you can do. Here you have four, and down here you have some more symbols. The first one is empty, meaning that you will not get more results on your die. But if we would have placed it here, you can see a black dot. Meaning that this will add one to your die. Here it would add two, and here it would add three. And remember, you can always use coins to add up to your value. Once you have determined how much value your die have, it's time to place out some research cubes. So now we have a value on our die. We had four and then we added two coins, giving us a total of seven. And now we need to place out these cubes on the spots on our cards that we would like to research. To place out the research cubes, you need to spend the points. The first spot here, the blank ones, will cost you two. The second one will cost you four, the third one seven, and lastly, this one will cost you ten. 
meaning that we cannot afford to place out any cubes here just yet. But we could, for example, place out one research cube on the first one by spending two of our hard earned points. Then we could take the second cube and place it on the second research field and spending the last points. But we could also have used all of our seven points to just put one research cube on the third spot instead. And if you would like to, you can also split these research points up and put them on another animal. But they need to be from the same continent. Whenever you place a cube on the second, third or fourth space, you immediately get that amount of victory points stated on that spot. Meaning that in this case here, the player placed it on the third spot and immediately got three victory points. So that's the way we research. We take our die with the same color as the continent. But remember that you can change the color of the die by using these expedition tokens. And also you can raise the amount of the die by spending coins. Which probably will be a good idea to do every now and then, because the higher you want to research, the more points it will cost you to get these little research tokens out. So the first one there will cost you a little bit less, meaning two points, and as you move up it will get more and more expensive for you. So make sure to get some money so you will be able to actually pump this die up, so you will be able to get out as many research tokens as you possibly can on your animals. But once we have done the research, we have collected animals, money, experts and so on, now we have hopefully made it to some kind of conclusion about this animal. And it's time for us to publish what we know. To do the publication action, we first need to take our die and put it on the animal that we want to be our reference animal. Meaning that the animal that will influence what kind of publications we can do. That die needs to be the same color as the animal. Once we have done that, we are ready to publicate the research that we have done. This is where we will do our publication. Each of these rows represents different types. Over here we have the climates, here we have the habitat, the diet and which class the animal is. As you can see on the animals themselves, they have symbols matching some of the types out on the publication board. We will start from the far right and then we will move down to the left. And we need to follow the symbols that are on our reference animal, the one with the die. As I said, we start from the far right, which is the climate. We can see we have a cloud here, meaning that we should take this research cube and place it on the cloud, giving us eight victory points. If we would have had a research cube on the swan as well, we would have been able to place that out here as well. But we do not. Now we move to the third row. As you can see, we, as you can see, we have no research cubes on type number three on any of our animals. So we cannot place out anything here. So now we move to the second row. Here we have one cube on the meat with the snake. We have a cube on the second one with the swan, but that is the wrong symbol. This is a leaf. Our reference animal has meat. Lucky us, we have meat on our third animal over here. And even though it is not the same color as our reference animal, we can still put that one out as well. So we take the cube from the meat and put it out on the meat, giving us three times two victory scores, a total of six. Lastly, we have the last row, the class row. Here we have one cube on the snake and another cube over here on the snake. Again, we have a cube on the swan, but this is the wrong symbol, so we can't use that one. But we can take this cube here, along with this cube here, and place them out, giving us two times two scores, a total of four. When we have done our publications and we know how many scores we have received, we simply move that amount up on the victory score track. Once you have resolved your publication, you take your reference card, but also the ones from the same continent and put them face down next to your player area. These will count into your final scoring. That's the actions you can do during your turn. 
You can get experts, get money, figure out what animal you would like to research about, go out on expeditions and actually do some research, and then you can publicate it. Once you have done your turn, placed out your die, the turn goes on to the player on your left. And then that player would do their turn, and so on. This is the way the game moves on until all of the die have been placed out on the board. Once this happened, we go into a little cleanup phase, where we remove all of the animal cards, the expert cards, and we put out new cards. We take all of the die and put them in this pretty little bag here and shake it around real good. Now we're ready for a new round. We flip the round token and then we go again. Again, the players get to draw four die from the bag, roll them, put them out on their board, and we are ready to go again. And this is the way the game goes on until we have played the sixth round. Once we have played the sixth round, it's time for us to do the last calculations on what kind of scores we have actually received. So now it's time to do some end of game scoring. First, we need to discard any animals that are in front of the player, but not the ones we have set aside from the publications. These animals are discarded along with the research cubes on them. And this is where we can change this to the other side to help us out a little bit. Then we need to look into the publication table again, because if you have managed to get the right amount of research cubes on these spots, you will get a certain amount of points. If you, for example, manage to get four research cubes on the first one, you will get three points. But if you manage to get five on this, you will get five points. If you have six research points here, you would get eight. And moving forward. You do not need to remember this in your head, as there is a table reminding you. On the little aid next to your player board. Next we need to add up our animal cards, but also our expert cards to see if we have managed to get any scores from this. Here we have three animal cards and two expert cards from the same continent, giving us a total of five. Meaning that this would give us five points. But remember to count all of your expert cards, also the ones that are placed beneath the ones that are on the top. Lastly, we get one point for every expedition token, one point for every two coins, and four points for every royal seal we have at the end of the game. Once we have taken the scores from the publication, from the cards, and from the coins and royal seals, expedition tokens, we add them up with whatever score we had from before, and then we have a glorious winner who will forever be a part of the encyclopedia story. And that's the way you play Encyclopedia, which is a nice little game. If you like worker placement, if you like die placement, this one is really for you. This is just beautifully done. The little mechanics here, everyone has something to do the whole time. One turn goes really fast, it moves on to the next turn that goes really fast. You get the animals, you place out your little cubes. It's nicely, nicely, nicely done. And what I have showed you here is, of course, the competitive mode here with four players. But you can also play it competitive as well, but solo, by using these AI cards. And then you play against an AI instead. I have used this a couple of times and I think it works quite well, actually. The setup is exactly the same. The gameplay is exactly the same. You only have this behavioral cards that determines what the AI will do during its turn and some of these are quite hard actually. There's four different behavioral cards that will tell you what it does. It is not that easy to win but it is a good solo mode game. The artwork in this game and the color scheme is really really beautifully made. It's light, it's fun, it's happy and it makes you interested when you look at the board. You have the little symbol that are really easy to read, plus you get these little cool boxes here. I just, I mean, do we need this? No, but do we want it? Yeah, we want this. Also the artwork for the characters are really well made. You really feel like you are a part of a great expedition and that you are in this era and time going out on a global adventure to find new species and learn more about them. And to place out these little research cubes here on your animals actually give you the feeling of being a part and researching about them, getting to know more. 
putting them out on the different publications here gives you the feeling of achievement. Like you have actually done something. You have contributed to the encyclopedia by telling them more about these animals. The rule book is also really well written. You always have a little text explaining what you should do and what you cannot do. And you always have a picture just making it a little bit extra clear on what actually is possible for the player. Along with an example explaining it again what you can or cannot do or what the different players are doing in this rule book. Which is just really nicely done and I think it's easy to read, it's easy to learn, it's well stated in the book what you can or what you cannot do. It's a good rule book. There you have it my friend, that was Encyclopedia from Holy Grail Games. This is a nicely beautiful well made game. I quite quite enjoy this. I love putting out the little die there, I love to get the animals, I love to do the research on them. Also, the solo mode worked really, really well in this game. I am quite happy to have been a part of making a video on this game because this is probably one of my new favorite games. I really like this. It was really, really good. So again, if you're into dice placement, if you're into fun, lighter game, but still quite strategic, well, this is for you. This is a game where players can sit down and have a good time, where players always have something to do, you know, one turn does not take that long time, meaning that you do not have to sit and wait for ages before it's your turn. So this is quite a cool little game. If you want to know more about it, check out, there will be links down in the description, so be sure to check that out. If you want to know more of my channel, if you want to see more, well, write a comment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, whatever you feel fits your need, I will be happy with that. But most importantly, please keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace.